The original Kingpin Life of Crime is really one of those underappreciated games that you just don't see people talking about all that much. You got the box or what? Developed by Yatrix Entertainment, who would eventually become Treyarch and work on the Call of Duty series, it was one of the first mature themed shooters that I can ever remember playing. You better back off, those guys will rip you to shreds. You play it as an unnamed thug shooting his way through a crime riddled city, killing copious amounts of unscrupulous criminals along the way. All in a quest for vengeance against your former boss, a guy who was a blatant homage to Pulp Fiction's Marcellus Wallace. How far do you want me to go with this? It was a pretty tough journey too, which meant you'd often need backup in the form of all the various hide guns you come across. Literal guns for hire that would follow you around and watch your back. Alright, let's go. Helping out during combat and generally just being absolute bros. There's three freaks in that tunnel. You wanna join us? You gotta take them out with a crowbar. You had weapon upgrades, there were different routes throughout the levels, items to find, and missions to complete for different groups. Hey, come back anytime, huh? Thanks for shopping, Ponomatic. And all of the environments were designed by a guy named Viktor Antonov, who also worked on games like Half Life 2 and Dishonored, giving the whole thing a very unique and stylistic setting. All topped off with a soundtrack by Cypress Hill, with members of the band even voicing certain NPCs. So you can see how original and one of a kind the whole thing was, which made it doubly disappointing that it never really got the kind of legacy that it deserves. Mostly because it's one of those games, along with Sin, that had the unfortunate timing of coming out around the same time as Half-Life did. I still remember playing it for the first time back when I was a dumb kid, and the first thing I did was run around whacking people with the metal pipe. Quickly realizing though that that's not how you're intended to play. Because along with other titles like Deus Ex and System Shock 2, it really helped to introduce the idea that first person shooters could be more than just circle strafing around until you found the exit button. I just feel like it's one of those titles where if you know, you know. And every year or so, I always find myself coming back to replay it again. I mean, yeah, I really like this game. I liked it enough to do two videos on it for my channel. Somebody turn on the lights. So there really was an opportunity here to update a decades old cult classic and introduce it to a new audience, which is something that's been sadly squandered here with Kingpin Reloaded, developed by Slipgate Ironworks and published by 3D Realms. <laughs> And look, I don't know if I've just become too accustomed to really good remasters lately, but even still, man, like Kingpin Reloaded just doesn't do this thing justice. Yo, he led, man! Ah! And it brings me no amount of pleasure to say that in a lot of ways, it's just outright embarrassing. <laughs> First announced way back in 2020, over the years there's been little to no information surrounding the project, and about all we've ever gotten was a few screenshots and some admittedly dope concept art. I knew something was up though when they showed off that updated gameplay trailer recently, and for some reason no one seemed to notice that they'd used footage for the Reload Edition both times, you know, instead of actually properly comparing it to the vanilla footage. And then, finally hopping into the full version, things didn't fare much better either. And if you were hoping for this to be the definitive, most accessible way to play through that original campaign, well, then I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but this just ain't it. Firstly though, on a more positive note, what does the remaster do well? Well, I mean, I guess I like the new dialogue wheel, where you can now easily choose from the available options when interacting with other NPCs. It was happening. I like that they got rid of those stupid dollar sign icons whenever you kill someone, which they showed off in that old gameplay trailer. I like that you can run the game in widescreen resolutions with a proper aspect ratio without having to mess around with fan mods too. Plus I like the fact that the campaign is here in its entirety, with all the swearing, the character cliches and stereotypes with nothing censored, well as far as I can tell anyway. I mean we all know that if they removed a single cutscene or a single swear word from any of this, that there'd be people up in arms riding over it. So luckily they had the good sense to not do that. <laughs> Characters often use the F word like it's a comma, and the Kingpin himself still drops dialogue almost verbatim from Pulp Fiction, with such disregard that it's a wonder that they never got sued. I'm prepared to scour the earth for this motherfucker. 
I'm prepared to scour the earth for that motherfucker. And off the back of that too, I like how you got the option to skip through these cinematics, which is a nice inclusion if you're going to be replaying through the campaign. All of the character models still have that whole wobbly Quake 2 engine thing going on too, which is absolutely part of what makes that engine so nostalgic. So a lot of the charm and the character of the original game is still there, and that is an absolute positive in a world where older forms of media are constantly being rewritten and modified. There's even the option to play through the entire game with the so-called original gameplay as well, though I can't imagine why you'd ever bother, because I mean at that point you're better off just actually playing the original, but at least I can't fault them for including it. The thing is though, everything outside of that is where the remaster just kind of suffers. Good lord, what is happening in there? Now the first thing I noticed was just how odd a lot of these new fonts and icons look, some of which just look almost out of place. Plus, the main menu's been completely redesigned, looking absolutely nothing like the original, which removes a lot of the grunge and that gritty tone that the old one used to have. But the main menu is the least of the issues this remaster has, because visually, this is often an absolute mess. And it arguably looks worse than the original game in almost every instance. The key! I thought you had it! You dumb mess! I told you to get the key! Nicky's gonna fucking shit when he hears you thought you forgot it! What do you mean when he hears I forgot it, you little rat? The biggest issue these enhanced graphics have is just this insane amount of fog and lens flare, which is prevalent almost every single time you enter a room and turn a corner. And even turning these settings off in the options didn't really seem to improve things either. You can toggle back and forth between each mode here by pressing a single button on the keyboard, which is a nice touch. And I do think that those original graphics often look better than the enhanced ones. No shit. But even then, like comparing the original graphics in the remaster to the actual original graphics, you know what I mean? Like actually running the old game, it still looks worse in comparison. I mean, I'll show you a few comparison shots all back to back and you be the judge. It does look like shit. Low times are often super long too, upwards of 30 seconds. The movement and the mouse aiming feels really choppy too. And there's even some people who can't launch the game at all. Kind of reminds me again of the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, how the PS1 emulation for Metal Gear Solid looked and played worse than running it on an actual PS1. <laughs> then that brings me on to the lighting and the shadows. Now I don't quite know what's going on here, but all I can say is that the shadows often don't make any sense. And you'll see them on surfaces that they're clearly not supposed to be on. At which point it seems like they've just taken on a mind of their own. And look man, I don't mind if a 24 year old game wants to add in real time lighting and shadows. A lot of those Night Dive remasters seem to be doing that now, and it looks awesome when it's done properly. But when it just creates these shadows that look more like anomalies that have broken out of an SCP confinement compound, it doesn't quite have the same appeal. That's a damn shame, I tell you. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that old Dracula movie from the 90s, when you'd see Gary Oldman's shadow doing all these weird things in the background, or to a lesser extent, I guess, Mr. Burns in The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Simpson, eh? Excellent. Some of those other lighting effects, like the lens flares from all these bright light sources, is so overpowering that it literally makes it impossible to see. Which really makes me wonder if any of these effects were even fully tested once they were implemented. So my advice there is just to turn as much of that stuff off as you possibly can. Still though, that's not really going to fix things like the explosions, which also look completely off. Like, they just messed up the scale for how big the explosions were supposed to be and accidentally multiplied it by 10. Perfection.
And I don't even know how to describe what occurs when you use the flamethrower, but I can only imagine it's the closest I'm ever going to get to having bleach thrown into my eyes. My eyes! Apart from that, all of the textures have been updated and overhauled to bring them up to a more modern standard, apparently. I mean, they've definitely been updated in size, that's for damn sure, because Kingpin Reloaded's download size is about 12 gigabytes, compared to the original game, which is like 800 megabytes. And again, like, I'm not fully sure, like, what's going on with these new textures or what processes they took, but at least for my eyes, they do have all the hallmarks of something being AI upscaled. Now, I've been told by someone at 3D Realms that they didn't do that, and they've all been done by hand, and you can definitely see with some of these textures that they've clearly been made by another human. But then for others, I've got to admit that that's kind of hard to believe. And when you look at some of the ones with text or other images, they often come across as borderline gibberish and nonsensical. I mean, compare how these two versions of the same skybox look, for instance. The so-called enhanced heads-up display is also a bit of a mixed bag, with this odd icon representing the player on the bottom left of the screen, which barely even resembles the guy to begin with. Weirdly too, with the enhanced HUD turned on, when you're wearing body armor, it doesn't actually show the amount of armor points you've got remaining. Yet if you go back to the classic HUD, the numbers are right there, clear as day. So, I don't know, I guess it's an enhancement now to remove vital information that the player might want to know. That's a damn shame, I tell you. Even more annoyingly is that the enhanced heads up display doesn't even show how much damage your allies are taking during combat. Meanwhile. <laughs> And this is really what I'm talking about, man. It's just all these minor but frequent little oversights that keep popping up. Like this bit here during the cutscene on the motorbike, how the background isn't even scrolling properly and keeps lagging behind. Speaking of the actual bugs and glitches like that too, well, where do I begin? I mean, I experienced stuff even as early on as the starting area in Skid Row. There's a bit early on there when you're supposed to wait for a couple of guys to get distracted by a radio, so you can then sneak past them and get into the nearby warehouse. And it was a creative little sequence that really taught you to think outside of the box, showing off that this really wasn't going to be another mindless run and gun shooter. And yet the first time I played it in the remaster, it didn't even work properly. And one of the guys just glitched out completely, forcing me to restart the entire campaign. <laughs> there's plenty of other little random bugs too, like enemies getting stuck on ledges, caught on ladders, stairs or doorways like it's Daikatana 1.0. Part of what made the original game so good for its time was how intelligent the AI could be, to the point that they'd often make these really impressive jumps across platforms and be able to almost follow you anywhere. And consider too that in other games like Half-Life, you pretty much had to coddle the friendly NPCs step by step to get them where they needed to go. And yet here was a game like Kingpin where you could almost forget about them and they'd usually keep up. So for it to often be arguably worse here in the remaster is another massive disappointment. I also found too that a lot of the time and seemingly at random, my buddies would just turn on me and start shooting and I couldn't figure out what the hell I was doing wrong here. I mean, I sure don't remember that happening much in the base game, and yet I lost count of the amount of times it happened here. What the fuck did I do wrong? I think my favorite bug though was one where I got killed, right at the same time as I also killed the final enemy in the level. At which point the game still showed me the ensuing cinematic of one of the main bad guys getting away, only to then cut back to my very still dead body. <laughs> and yeah, look, I know that the base game was always kind of janky and had similar issues too, but definitely not to this extent. But besides that, like, you kind of expect this stuff to be fixed, or at least improved in a so-called enhanced edition. Oh. I mean, even the sound design is just so lacking, with there being an outright absence of ambient audio to the point that I wasn't even sure if it was a bug or just another oversight. Part of what made the original game so much fun to play through was how you kept hearing all those Cypress Hill loops playing in the background, usually coming from a radio or something like that. And it worked really well to keep the feel and tone of this gritty crime infested journey. Here though, it's usually completely lacking and the vast amount of areas are just dead quiet. And again, like I hate to bring out the comparison stick, but let's look at the same starting area again back to back.
At first, I thought this might have been like a licensing issue, like they couldn't get all those old Cypress Hill songs back or something. I was playing through that Duke Nukem remaster on the Evercade last week, and I was kind of shocked to find out that all of Bobby Prince's music from the second game wasn't able to be licensed. So I know that this is a real issue with some of these remasters, and the absence of this can totally kill the vibe of these older titles. It was all a commotion. However, it turns out that's actually not the case. And instead, I think it just might be an issue with how the music is projecting during the game. Because I noticed that some of the radios are still playing those iconic jingles, it's just you have to be standing right next to the radio to actually hear it. Which again, just all makes me wonder what they've actually been doing with this thing for the past three years. It's pretty fucking far from okay. I know a big part of what they were trying to nail in this enhanced edition was to balance out the combat, which was a real problem that original game had. And it does seem like they've improved upon that stuff early on. I mean, don't get me wrong, Kingpin is still a crushingly hard game at times, but there is a noticeable change in how some of these earlier areas now play out, with it being far less punishing. I still can't help but wonder though what they've actually done on the whole though, because weapons like the flamethrower, the grenade launcher, and the rocket launcher are still pretty much useless in comparison to something like the Tommy gun. And those enemies in the final few areas still soak up bullets like it's a slap on the ass. So you're trying to tell me that this really took them three something years to put together? Some minor balancing changes, along with some barely cobbled together visual settings that are being passed off as enhanced. Yikes. And I'll shit out onto the back of that too, that this is just all the stuff I came across in the four or so hours I spent with it. I'm sure that people are going to deep dive into it way more in the coming days and weeks, and fully explore the extent of all the downgrades. Now look, I don't want to act like this is some kind of irreparable crime against humanity, and I know that 3D Realms are going to be patching this thing over time. So I'm sure that at some point, it's going to be a lot closer to where it needs to be, but right now man, Kingpin Reloaded is a hard fucking sell. <laughs> And there's just not really any reason to play it, considering it's just a worse off looking and arguably worse off playing version of the original game. Kingpin just deserved better than this man, we all did. And when we're living in a timeline where games like Quake 2, Power Slave and Turok 3 are being lovingly brought into a new era, things like this, it just doesn't cut it. I guess everything we heard about you is true. Come on, let's go. I guess everything we heard about you is true. Come on, let's go. Come again. I hope they can do a better job in 2036 when they finally release Sin Reloaded, but if this is the kind of treatment that that one's gonna get too, well, maybe it's better off staying back in 1998. Hey, come back in, Simon. Thanks for shopping for me. Oh, 